and welcome. Tonight, Defence Headquarters records some gains in its fight against terrorism in the last two months with the killing of 24 Boko Haram insurgents and arrests of informants within this period. President Mohamed Buhari praises his administration's investment in procurement of military equipment as he charges new military officers to brace for the challenges of emerging security threats. And Rivers Assembly passes motion to de-recognize Celestino Mejia as a former governor of the state gives him seven days to refund 696.5 million naira in benefit. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria says it has disbursed 2.1 trillion naira to support real sector economy in the country. And on sports news tonight, the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, finally inaugurates the board of the Nigerian Football Federation nine months after its elective congress in Benin City. And from Abuja, the nation's capital, presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, returns to the country after 12 days away. from London, an ex-policeman has killed at least 38 people, most of them children, in a gun and knife attack in Thailand. The last few weeks have kept men of the Nigerian armed forces on their toes against terrorists and the efforts appear to have yielded some positive results. From the defence headquarters, troops of Operation Hadding K have reported not less than 24 members of the terrorist group Boko Haram have been neutralised in the last couple of weeks. Our correspondent Emperor Simon has more. The director of the Defense Media Operations, Major General Musa Danmadami, is meeting journalists at the Defense Headquarters in Abuja to give an account of the various operations of the military troops across the country between September 22nd and October the 6th, 2022. Troops arrested 29 Boko Haram and Islamic State of West Africa province logistics supplier, while eight six suspected Boko Haram terrorists and the Islamic State of West, Af uh, West African province informants and collaborators, including a, for a foreigner, were arrested at different locations. Troops also neutralized 19 terrorists and arrested 42 suspected terrorist logistics suppliers. Troops also recorded some successes in other parts of the country. Troops conducted operational activities at various locations within Zampara, Sokoto, and KB states. During the operations, troops neutralized five terrorists, arrested seven terrorists, and rescued eight civilians. Troops of Operation Dakata de Barawo, in the sustenance and fight against crude oil theft and maritime illegality, discovered and destroyed a total of 14 illegal refining sites, 72 metal storage tanks, nine wooden boats, 29 dugout pits, 51 ovens and 25 reservoirs. On how the remaining 23 train passengers abducted along the Abuja Kaduna rail line in April this year were released, the defense media spokesman has this to say. In the course of operations, we tell you that there is what we call both kinetic and non-kinetic operations that are being conducted. So this one was part of the non-kinetic operations that was conducted. And that's why you are able to see that those people are secure. Other successes recorded by the military within the last two weeks include the arrest of 64 youths suspected of attempting to disrupt the Independence Day celebration on October 1 in Abuja and the arrest of 33 suspected illegal minors at the Guagualada Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory. Emperor Simon, Channels Television News. In Zamfara State, it's a different scenario as at least nine people, mostly women and children, fleeing a terrorist attack in Beninwaje, a 
community Onda Bukuyum local government area are reported to have drowned when the canoe they were traveling in capsized. The terrorists were said to have invaded the community around 5.45 p.m. on Wednesday, shooting sporadically, forcing the residents to flee from the River Rhine community. A resident of Beninwaje who escaped the attack told Channels Television that the terrorists the community were in the community for over three hours on challenge. The director general to the state governor on new media, Ibrahim Zama, confirmed the incident but could not state the number of those who died. And a day after the release of the Kaduna train attack victims, President Muhammadu Buhari made an impromptu visit to the hospital where the victims are being treated. According to a statement by his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Mr. Gaba Shehu, President Buhari diverted to the hospital to visit the 23 victims, where he also commended the Nigerian military for their bravery in securing their safe release from Boko Haram terrorists. Also present at the hospital alongside the president were the Chief of Defence Staff, General Loki Rabo, and members of the Chief of Defence Staff Action Committee who facilitated the release of the train attack victims. Well, it was a busy day for the president as he had other items on his itinerary in Kaduna where he challenged the nation's armed forces to replicate the successes recorded in the northeast in other parts of the country. The president gave this challenge during the passing out parade and commissioning today of cadets of 69 regular course for the army, navy and air force in Kaduna. He said his administration has provided major boost to the armed forces to ensure peace is restored in troubled areas. 239 cadets of the 69 regular corps comprising the Army, Air Force and Navy are being commissioned as officers of the Nigerian military. They are passing out from the Nigerian Defense Academy after completing five years of military and academic training. This morning for the personal parade of 69 regular calls of Nigerian Defense Academy. President Mohamed Buhari arrives for the colorful event, his last as the Commander-in-Chief of Nigeria's Armed Forces. He proceeds to inspect the parade a tradition which he partook as a young military officer decades ago. The parade is also witnessed by the host governor, Nasir El Rufai, the leadership of the National Assembly, top military officers and relatives of the graduating cadets. The battalion actively participated in all the cadets brigade inter-battalion competitions. Since its inception in 1964, the Nigerian Defense Academy has graduated over 20,000 officers, including 478 from sister African countries, Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, Benin Republic, Chad, Guinea, Niger Republic, and Liberia. While congratulating the new officers, President Buhari reminds them that they are joining the military in an era of expanding global security threats, challenging them to brace up for the task ahead. Gentlemen cadets, I congratulate you once again and on this most memorable day of your life. Your journey and career as officers in the armed forces of Nigeria begins today. There is no better time to prove your valor and demonstrate the virtues upon which the academy was founded in the defense of your fatherland. And I must and I trust you to do so with uncompromising dignity and honor. The president also scores his administration high in the area of procuring more equipment and hardware for the military and other security agencies, a feat which he notes has yielded positive results in the fight against insurgency, banditry and violent agitations. In pursuing 
this same objective, the Nigerian army has received more than 2,000 units of various armored fighting vehicles, guns, and equipment. These are in addition to improved funding of the three services along with other security and intelligence agencies. These comprehensive and systematic acquisitions within seven years are not only unprecedented in the first 38 years, but they also align with our pledge to safeguard and strengthen the security architecture of our country. Those who distinguish themselves also receive awards from the Commander-in-Chief. Asona won the most outstanding female cadets award for Navy. Company senior that was our also won the Indian Shield Army and the Commander's Maximum Chief Award which were presented to him during the regimental dinner night. The mission of the Nigerian Defense Academy is to provide officer cadets with the knowledge, skills and values necessary to meet the requirements of a military officer through military, academic and character development, values that will help them carry out their duties in the days ahead. And away from security matters, the River State House of Assembly has passed a motion to recognize Celestin Omeha as a former governor of the state. The motion by the leader of the House, Mr. Martin Amewole, on the floor of the House today also asked Mr. Omeha to refund uh, millions of naira as he has received as benefits and pension and stop using the title His Excellency. The lawmaker argued that it was important that the House reverses the resolution of the 8th Assembly because the new Assembly has better knowledge and particulars of the Supreme Court judgment which removed Mr. Omeha from office and installed Mr. Ruti Miyamichi as governor in 2007. It's the 53rd legislative day for the year and members of the River State House of Assembly seem to be in high spirit for the day's business which kicked off on the arrival of the speaker. After initial formalities, the leader of the House, Martin Amewule, moved the first and only motion for the day which seeks to de-recognize Sir Celeste Nomehia as former governor of the state. The House in June 2015 had urged the executive arm to recognize Mr. Omeya, but the leader of the House says they now have more informed particulars on the Supreme Court judgment which sacked Omeya from office in 2007 and brought in Rotemi Amici. All former Sir Celestine Omeya is being treated as a former governor, getting all the, receiving all the entitlements, the benefits, and all the privileges that all former governors are entitled to. Mr. Speaker, is therefore a problem for us because at the time this motion was before this house, members did not have better and further particulars concerning the matter that was before the Supreme Court or that the judgment that uh, the Justice of the Supreme Court delivered at the time. According to the lawmakers, Mr. Omehe has also to refund the sum of 600 million naira in benefits and 96.5 million naira in pension so far received as a former governor within seven days. State constituency arise to second the motion moved by... There is no dissenting voice as the lawmakers debate on the motion. Every prayer here, Mr. Speaker, I'm fully in support of it. But I know my constituents will be happy today seeing me standing in part of justice. All 21 members at this plenary in a house of 32 lawmakers voted in support of the four prayers as the speaker defends their actions. So at every point, legislators and the legislature will always stand their own to continue to review even actions they have taken or resolved before. If you look at order 34, Rule 4 of the standing order of the House. It is quite clear, and that separates each assembly from the next one. The House also accepted in evidence a copy of the Nigerian Weekly Law Report, which contains the landmark judgment of the Supreme Court that sacked Celestine Omeha, holding that in the eyes of the law, Mr. Omeha was never a governor. 
we will in what appears to be a swift action to the resolution of the State House of Assembly, the Governor of River State will on Friday ratify the decision of the state's legislature. In a statement by his spokesman, Kelvin Ibiri, Governor Wike is to sign the instrument cancelling the recognition of Mr. Celestin Omeha as former governor, which will give it legal backing to the effect that Mr. Omeha was never a governor in River State. Mr. Omeha had been a major ally of Governor Wike almost to the end of his eight-year tenure, but it's unclear what went saw in their relationship. Mr. Meher is yet to react to the development. In part two after the break, federal government and lawyers to ASU failed to reach out of court settlements, Supreme Court to make a decision on the matter tomorrow. That's in a moment. Do stay with us. Welcome back. If you just join us, you're watching the news at 10, coming to you live from Channel's Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. Defence headquarters report some gains in its fight against terrorism in the last few months, with the killing of 24 Boko Haram insurgents and arrests of informants for the period. President Mohammed Buhari praises his administration's investment in procurement of military equipment as he charges new military officers to brace up to the challenges of emerging security threats. The Rivers Assembly passes motion to de-recognize Celeste Nemehe as former governor of the state, gives him seven days to refund 696.5 million naira in benefits. And at least 37 people have been killed in an attack at a child care center northeast in Thailand. More than 20 children are among the dead. Now shift gears to the judiciary where Governor Adigbo Igao Yitola of Oshun State has appealed the federal high court judgment that nullified his nomination as the candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the July 16, 2022 governorship election in the state. The governor and his deputy, Benedict Alabi, have also filed an application before the federal high court Abuja seeking to stay the execution of the court judgment pending the final determination of the appeal. Just as Emeka Nwite had, while delivering ruling in the suit filed by the People's Democratic Party, invalidated the candidacy of Mr. Yitola and his deputy on grounds that Governor May Malabuni of Yobe State, who submitted their names to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, violated the provisions of Section 183 of the Constitution and Section 82, Subsection 3 of the Electoral Act 2022. In the appeal filed by the APC through their councils, Dr. Abiodun Lionu SEN and Abdul Fattah Yedili, Governor Yutala and his deputy listed 19 grounds against the lower court judgment. They are asking the Court of Appeal to set aside the ruling of the lower court and affirm their nominations as valid and lawful. They argue that the PDP lacked the locus to commence a legal action against the governor as the issue of nomination of candidate was an internal affair of political parties. Meanwhile, the Court of Appeal will on Friday, October 7, deliver ruling in an application by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, seeking to appeal the Industrial Court order. The Industrial Court had, September 21, granted an interlocutory order in favour of the federal government, ordering university lecturers to resume work pending the resolution of their dispute with government. The lawyers for the federal government and ASU also failed to resolve the eight-month-old strike out of court that was advised by the Court of Appeal. The atmosphere in the courtroom at the Court of Appeal is calm, as few lawyers as some interested members of the public await the commencement of the hearing in the application filed by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, seeking the leave of court to file an appeal against the industrial court order. At the resumed hearing, 
The lawyers for the federal government and ASU told the court that they couldn't reach an out-of-court settlement as advised by the justices. Though ASU has withdrawn the motion for stay of execution, counsel to the union, Mr. Femi Falano, argues that the lecturers have the right to file an appeal against the interlocutory injunction because it was against them. However, he is grateful for the negotiations made so far. The leadership of the House of Representatives had given assurance to Nigerians that the president is seized of this matter and that uh, another meeting will be held today for a final resolution of the matter. The federal government prayed the court to dismiss the entire application on grounds of incompetence and jurisdiction. The, the Honorable Justices took all the applications. Of course, we raised several other issues that his application is in, uh, was incompetent. He had approached the court with dirty hands. He had not evinced special circumstances and all that. So the Honorable Court listened to all counsel and adjourned to tomorrow for ruling. On the registration of two unions for university lecturers, ASU plans to approach the court. We are going to file any moment from now. Uh, the law is clear on classification of trade unions. In the First Republic, we had a proliferation of what they used to call mushrooming of trade unions. The government decided to restructure the unions in 1973, the law was further amended in 1994. So as far as the law is concerned today, there's only one union for all our members of academic staff in all Nigerian universities. You can have two, you can have three. Justice Barker Hammer subsequently fixed Friday, October the 7th, for ruling on the appeal by ASU. For a human rights lawyer and labor activist, Mr. Femi Aborishade, it may be time for the Nigeria Labor Congress to declare a nationwide solidarity strike in support of ASU. He made the call at the NLC Roundtable on Decent Work Day in Abuja. However, the NLC president, Mr. Yuba Waba, restated his call for increased wages for workers, maintaining that the value of the current 30,000 Naira minimum wage has been eroded by inflation. Solidarity, solidarity President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Mr. Yuba Waba, joined other union members as they sing their solidarity song to commence a roundtable to mark the 2022 Decent Work Day in Abuja. The crux of the discussion is the agitation for better wages and an improved working environment for Nigerian workers. Thank you very much. Some of the speakers here also lay emphasis on the need to review workers' wages in view of recent economic realities. A lot of bread, comrade, in Abuja that used to be 400, 350, is now 1,000 naira. Comrades, 30,000 cannot take us home. It's not possible to pay your transportation for 30 days. Nigeria at the ILC, the International Labour Conference this year, was asked to come and report on the implementation of the ILO Convention, particularly the Convention on the Protection of Wages. And I really want to urge the NLC to really push and pursue those discussions. And there's actually some improvements in the workers' uh, 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 wages. Away from the crux of discussions here, the keynote speaker urges the Nigeria Labour Congress to declare a nationwide solidarity strike in support of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. I encourage the Nigeria Labour Congress to reconsider that option of declaring solidarity strike action in support of ASU. The victory of ASU is the victory of organized labor. Therefore, we need to do something about it. Public university lecturers in Nigeria have been on strike since February this year, and the Nigeria Labor Congress had also, in July this year, issued a warning to the federal government asking it to quickly resolve the impasse with ASU. However, 
Neither the threats nor the ongoing legal tussle between the government and the lecturers has been able to reopen the universities for learning. We switch to some political stories now. Gloria Mazuka is standing by. Hi, Gloria. Good to see you. Hello, Millicent. Well, here at more on politics. Presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has returned to Nigeria from the United Kingdom after 12 days. The APC flag bearer landed in Abuja this evening to the warm embrace of party chieftains and supporters. Some of those at the airport to receive him are his running mate, Kashim Shatima, the DG of the party's presidential campaign, Governor Simon Lalong, and former APC chairman, Adams Oshomale. While he was away, there'd been concerns over his whereabouts, especially after he missed the signing of the peace accord for the 2023 elections. Although he was represented at that event by his running mate, Kashim Shatima, Pictures later surfaced on social media showing Mr. Tinubu holding a meeting in the UK and another one showing him on a bicycle. The party has not been able to inaugurate its presidential campaign council, which is believed to have been delayed pending the arrival of the party's candidate. The trip was very good. I enjoyed my, you know, break. And, uh, I'm happy to be back and to my fatherland. And Nigeria should expect a very intelligent ability to think and perform. Nigeria should expect that the help they needed is here. The hope that is almost teetering is back. I'm back actively, and uh, we hold every effort uh, to the country of patriotism, dedication, capacity, and ability to do the job. Not negative thinking, not the fact that Nigeria has uh, failed. This country, on this continent, is the greatest of all. And we should be a help. If it's rebuilt, we are builders. If it's construction, we are constructed, but constructors. If it is uh, 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 assurance, we give Nigeria that we definitely will make a better country out of it all. In other political matters, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has appointed a former national publicity secretary of the party, Mr. Kolawe, Kolawale Ologodinho, as one of his spokespersons for the 2023 presidential campaign. Well, a statement by his media advisor, Paul Ibe, explains that Mr. Ologodinho joins other spokespersons earlier appointed by the presidential candidate to project the unique selling points of Abubakar and keep the electorate updated about goings on in the campaign. Apart from being a former National Publicity Secretary of the PDP, Mr. Ologbodion was the Director of Media and Publicity of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council for the 2029-2019 presidential election. He is currently a member of the party's National Executive Committee. On staying with political matters, only 28% of the nation's youth population is participating in election elective positions in the 2023 general elections against 24% recorded in 2019. Well, this is according to a report by civil society group Yaga Africa, which is calling for increased participation of youth and women in elective positions in the Nigeria political space. The executive director of the organization, Mr. Samson Itodo, made the call in Abuja while presenting the preliminary report on youth candidates taking part in the 2023 general elections. There is a decline in youth candidacy from 34% in 2019 elections to 28.6% in the 2023 elections. For instance, the youth candidacy for House of Reps dropped from 27% in 2019 to 21.6% in 2023. 
about 5% drop. Similarly, in the state houses of assembly, the youth candidacy also dropped from 41% to 35.6% in 2023. Our third finding is that political parties nominated more youth candidates for legislative elections at the state level than executive and national assembly seats. So there are more candidates at the state houses of assemblies as when compared to other um, elections. The Yaiga Africa perspective, there are four reasons that are responsible, we believe, for the decline in the level of um, youth candidacy for 2023. Principal amongst them was the excessive cost of nomination forms, the highly commercialized party primaries, the substitution of candidates, and the deregistration of political parties. The pipeline surveillance job being jointly conducted by a private security outfit and the government security agency has uncovered a suspected illegal pipe connection to the Trans Forcados pipeline in Yokiri Axis offshore Forcados in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. According to security operatives in the area, the pipeline, which is believed to be over four kilometers long into the sea, is suspected to have an evacuation point at the Afroma A platform owned by SPDC. Our energy correspondent, Olu Phillips, who has been following some of the events in the creeks, gives details. This is the point of a suspected insertion and illegal connection. You can see there are three pipes here. The big one is a national trunk line, which is the trans Forcados trunk line, a 24 inches pipeline. Now you see those two pipelines on top of it, making um, a head knock on the pipe. Those two pipelines are suspected to be something that has been on for a while, because if you look at them, they are quite old. Uh, doesn't look like they are quite rusty. Doesn't look like something that has been done in the last Looks like something that has been done over the last five, six to ten years, if you look at the structure of those pipes. Now, if you look at the one that is down there, you can see that in spite of being heavily buried in there is a 24 inches diameter pipe. It doesn't look rusty because it is a professional pipe used in transporting crude. It still has a lot of layers on it so that it doesn't rust easily. But if you see the one that is um, capping it on top, it's rusty already but also not very new. That suggests to you that um, this was done by engineers, those who know. And the question is, why do we have that insertion on a scraped top of a 24 inches pipe, double six inches pipe, suspected to be traveling to the platform called the um, Aproma 1 or Aproma A um, platform. So you see, this is what we have here. Those two lines traveling. Those two lines traveling and joining up themselves here, to my mind, it tells me um, it will give it more pressure. And now going backwards, something again is suspicious to my mind from what I can see here, which is the fact that it looks to me that this pipe here was traveling straight because I don't know why that point was isolated. You can see it's been isolated. It looks like it's been traveling straight got cut off there, cut off here by way of two meters, and this making its way into this place. These are some of the questions that someone needs to answer, and why we have a galvanized pipe um, traveling that way and backwards this way, and why this place is isolated. From the forest of Yokri, um, offshore escravos, Olu Phillips, for Channels Television News. As part of measures to tackle oil theft head-on, the federal government says it is set to deploy a special mission surveillance aircraft over oil installations in the country. Well, this was made known by the Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa, Mr. Bashir Jamal, at the 53rd session of the weekly ministerial briefing in Abuja. 
Nigeria's maritime sector is under the radar at the 53rd session of the weekly ministerial briefing, anchored by the Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. The battle against piracy has recorded significant success, according to the Nimasa DG, following the introduction of the Deep Blue Sea project, and is now looking to tackle the protracted menace of crude oil theft, responsible for the nation's dwindling revenue. We have been talking with NNPC, and uh, the staff that are supposed to be deployed to address the issue of this oil theft using our own special mission aircraft. They are currently on training in Italy. As soon as they come, I promise that we will invite you to tell you that we have now commenced the issue of surveillance of our own pipeline with the assistance of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. The unresolved issue of the list in Nigeria from the war risk insurance list is another subject of priority for NIMASA. Our rating continues to increase as we continue to see calmer and safer waters in our own territorial waters. So we expect uh, the report from Lloyds of London and those insurance, conglomerate insurance companies that determine the position of war risk worldwide and see what we can get. Uh, Kenya has been on that list for over two decades, but uh, this year they removed Kenya from that list. I assure Nigerians very soon Nigeria will get out of that list because we continue to sustain the tempo of peace, uh, uh, peaceful waters, calmer waters, and clean operations as far as the issue of shipping is concerned. Among other gains from NIMASA is the remittance of 30 billion naira to the Federation account and the shortlisting of 11 banks for the $350 million cabotage fund disbursement. Well, staying with Energy Matters, the Executive Secretary of the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, Mr. Obunaya Oji, is calling for the formulation of a robust policy plan to drive the successful implementation of energy transition in Nigeria and Africa. He was speaking in Abuja at a policy dialogue hosted by NATI in partnership with Natural Resource Governance Institute, the African Climate Foundation and Budget. health matters in order to ensure that Nigerians, especially the most vulnerable, are protected by being fully vaccinated against polio, COVID-19 and other childhood diseases. Traditional rulers have to strengthen their community engagement. Well, this suggestion is coming from the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ehanire, who says that the federal government has been doing everything within its powers to provide adequate quantity of COVID-19 vaccines in the country. He was speaking in Abuja at the quarterly review meeting of the Northern Traditional Leaders Committee on Primary Health Care Delivery. It's the quarterly review meeting of the Northern Traditional Leaders Committee, organized by the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. The executive director of the agency kickstarts the meeting with an appeal to everyone to get fully vaccinated. May I use this opportunity to humbly remind those who are yet to receive their vaccination that the vaccines are available in designated health centers 
And for those who are yet to take their booster doses, we will continue to give these booster doses. And I urge you all to continue to promote immunization against COVID-19 in your communities, among friends and families. Finally, I humbly urge your highnesses to continue to promote polio and COVID-19 vaccination, routine immunization in your communities as you have done for several years. This is particularly important because for everyone to be protected, we must all be fully vaccinated. The Minister of Health on his part advocates for increased coverage across all states to achieve Nigeria's target of vaccinating at least 70% of the eligible population. We are not yet in the optimal performance level in the healthcare. We have a lot of work to do. And we still, therefore, need and plead with you for this engagement to continue in order to achieve our goal of bequeathing a primary health care system that actually meets the needs of the people. Beyond the appeal, the minister commends the governments of Nasarawa, Jigawa, Kano, and Kaduna states for recording the highest number of fully vaccinated persons and achieving the 70% target of fully vaccinated eligible population for COVID-19. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Millicent. Thanks, Gloria. And now to Ogun State, southwest region, where at least two persons have died and three others left injured after a tanker laden with premium motor spirit was engulfed in flames around the Luawele Junction altar in Ogun State in the early hours of today. A total of 12 vehicles, shops, goods were also burned. According to a statement by the Ogun State Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Court, traced the driver of the tanker was trapped inside the truck and another male found in one of the tricycles was burned beyond recognition. The driver of the truck was said to be coming from Lagos, heading to Ota, and on approaching the hill at the Luawela Junction, the truck developed mechanical fault, rolled back, fell on its side, spilling its content on the road, which resorted to the explosion. Now to some company news. Cadbury Nigeria PLC has unveiled winners of the Born Vita Tech Boot Camp for Children. The company says participants at the camp have acquired the necessary digital and life skills to compete in the ever-changing world. Cadbury Nigeria PLC leads an initiative aimed at developing children in the area of technology. The food, beverage and confectionery company through Bonvita Tech Boot Camp helps the children improve their technological knowledge. Our focus is on technology is it, artificial intelligence is important, children this generation, you know, and that to come, you know, as, as they begin to come up with all sorts of nice initiatives, we have to tap onto it and make sure that we hold on to that. We want to own this space, you know, this is our ambition. And it's not going to be a cheap ambition. So, you know, we have to make sure that we do the right things and attract the right people to do so. But the whole idea ultimately for us is to own this space. Be, uh, when people think of technology and children, they think of Bonvita and they think of Cadbury, they think of Mondelez. Children between the ages of 9 and 16 years learn artificial intelligence, gaming, robotics, coding and life skills as part of the curriculum over a six-week period. Uh, we know that um, the big joy of every mother today is to see her child succeed in whatever they do, whether it be academics, whether it be any, some, so, any other activity. So we, want, we partner with moms in preparing them on a day-to-day -day basis. So we say to every mother that a cup of bon vita in the morning is fortified with the essential vitamins and minerals that keeps you going in order to achieve your dreams. Because guess what? We are fortified with about 16 vitamins and minerals that keeps you healthy. Since inception of the program in 2019, over 1,000 children have been empowered with digital skills. Starting from this tech boot camp, I was able to understand more of the tech world. It opened my eyes to see that um, education is not just about your academics, um, your schooling, but it's also about what skill can you bring into the tech field. Since I took part of it, my robotic skills has increased. Mm -hmm. The capacity is growing higher and higher every day. And I love to join from Vita Boot Camp, and I love it. 
Cadbury Nigeria PLC says it is committed to supporting families by providing the right nourishment for their children and enable them achieve their dreams. And Waldo is standing by with business news. Thank you, Millicent. Hello and welcome to Business News. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says its intervention under the Real Sector Support Facility currently stands at 2.1%. 1 trillion naira. At the ongoing Abuja International Trade Fair in the nation's capital, the Deputy Director of Corporate Communications at the CBN, Mr. Samuel Okabwe, explains that 426 projects across the country were funded under the project. The color is red at the equities market today. It's late 3.23% in today's trading session, the largest single day drop in weeks. Let's hear the details from Laddie Williams. Hello and welcome to the stock market report. And we close today again in the red. That's three day losses this week. And it's down by a wider margin today, 3.23%, losing the 48,000 mark now. We're down there at 47,260 points. Talking about the all share index, look at the market cap there. We also lost the 26 uh, trillion mark. We're losing marks uh, uh, today. Let's uh, look at the activity chart now. We'll see it's all green, all green, 4,371 deals, 140 million uh, units of stocks traded valued at 2.51 billion, all green in a negative market, showing intense sell pressure uh, in the market. Let's look at the market movers today. Yeah, it's the big ones. Airtel Africa, MTN Nigeria. Airtel Africa lost about 10% to close at 1,800 Naira. I was starting at 2,000 Naira. We see MTN Nigeria there, 197 uh, Naira. You know, once this two moves, the market feels the pain, and it's a negative market breadth we're seeing today, but bigger uh, than what we saw yesterday. 23 decliners against 14 gainers. Last one for the week tomorrow, fingers crossed. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Larry Williams. It's back to you. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of Anisa 10 continues now with Millicent. Thank you, Anne. To some international news now. An ex-policeman has killed over 30 people, most of them children, in a gun and knife attack at a child care centre in northeast Thailand. Police say he then killed himself and his family after a manhunt following the attack in Nonboa Lamphu province. Children and adults are among the casualties at the nursery. Here's Simon Pusey with more on this and other news in, around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. An ex-policeman has killed at least 38 people, most of them children, in a gun and knife attack at a childcare centre in northeast Thailand. These images have been blurred due to their graphic nature. Police say the attacker shot and stabbed his victims before fleeing the scene. He then killed himself and his family after a manhunt. The 34-year-old perpetrator had attended a court hearing on drugs charges prior to the attack. Children and adults are among the casualties at the nursery. 
A teacher who survived the attack told Thailand's Thairath TV the gunman used to drop off his children at the nursery and had seemed polite. A motive for the attack remains unclear. At least 17 people have died and another 15 are missing after a migrant boat sank off the Greek island of Lesbos on Wednesday night. In dramatic footage, a group of people were seen trapped beneath a cliff as rescuers pulled them to safety. The Greek Coast Guard said the dinghy had left the Turkish coast carrying 40 people in very high winds. Volunteers joined rescue officials at the top of the cliff face on an island off the Peloponnese region of southern Greece. I think uh, this is a time to really cooperate much more substantially uh, in order to avoid uh, these types of incidents uh, of occurring uh, uh, in the future and to completely eradicate uh, uh, the smugglers uh, who prey uh, upon uh, innocent uh, uh, people, desperate people uh, who try um, uh, to reach uh, the European uh, continent uh, in vessels which are clearly not seaworthy. The leaders of 44 European countries are having talks in Prague in the Czech Republic at a historic first meeting of a new political club of nations. The European Union and its neighbours from Britain to Turkey met on Thursday to discuss shared security and energy problems stemming from Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in a rare and symbolic summit of 44 European countries, but not including Russia. The war in Ukraine is the main topic at the meeting. We understand it is tough to face evil but we also understand that truth does win. I can, it can take time, but in the end, we all know in our hearts that Ukraine will win, because the truth is on their side. Ethiopia's government has accepted an invitation by the African Union to participate in peace talks with rival Tigray forces. If held, the talks would be the first formal negotiations between the two sides since the outbreak of war in November 2020. Both sides had previously said they were prepared to participate in AU-mediated talks, but intense fighting has continued to rage across Tigray. Tigray's forces have yet to respond to the invitation for talks this weekend in South Africa. A protester outside a court in Santiago de Compostela has punched one of the accused in the back after the first session of the trial over one of Spain's worst train disasters. <laughs> TV footage showed a man making his way through a media scrum and police escorts and hitting Andres Cortatibart, the former head of traffic safety of ADIF, the national rain infrastructure operator. Quartabitart and the train driver Francisco Garzon are on trial over their role in the train crash that killed 80 people and injured 145 in the summer of 2013. An investigation showed the train was traveling at speeds of 179 kilometers per hour on a stretch with an 80 kilometer an hour speed limit when it went off the rails. And finally, French writer Annie Ernaux has won the Nobel Prize in Literature for what the panel said was an uncompromising 50-year body of work. For the courage and clinical acuity with which she uncovers the roots, estrangement... The prestigious accolade is awarded by the Swedish Academy and is worth 10 million Swedish kroner, or £807,000. Her books include A Man's Place and A Woman's Story. <laughs> when questioned by reporters outside her home, she said it was a great honor and that she was very happy and proud. And that's your international news around the world in five. And now back to the channel studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Welcome to Sports News. Now, the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, has inaugurated the Musa Kita-led Nigeria Basketball Federation Board nine months after its elective congress in Benin City, the Edo State Capital. Diary described the inauguration as significant for the growth of basketball in Nigeria and urged the new board to embrace reconciliation. Mr. Kita expressed gratitude to the minister for resolving the crisis that plagued the Federation for over five years by recognizing the outcome of the elective Congress. The Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports 
having noted the situation around the Nigerian Basketball Federation, has approved the elective Congress of January 31st, 2022, and the outcome of the board's decision. And that is why we're here today. By this development, Engineer Musa Amadokida, his board members, will hereby and henceforth receive the recognition and support of the federal government of Nigeria in all its activities. A three-time African champion, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will confront the senior national team of Costa Rica in a prestigious international friendly in the country's capital, San Jose, on November the 9th. The Super Eagles have been invited to the Central American nation as part of major activities sent for the Los Ticos to the FIFA World Cup finals in Qatar. The game is scheduled to be played at the National Stadium in San Jose and will kick off at 8 p.m. Costa Rican time, which is 3 a.m. Nigerian time. The Super Eagles also have another prestigious friendly lined up against Portugal in Lisbon on 17th of November. And that's a wrap on sports news. I'm Victor Mathias. It's back to Millicent with the wrap of the news at 10. Thank you, Victor. And the main news again. President Muhammadu Buhari has praised his administration's investment in procurement of military equipment as he charged new military officers to brace up to the challenges of emerging security threats. Also today, the River State House of Assembly passed a motion to recognize Celestino Mejia as a former governor of the state. The lawmakers also gave him seven days to refund 696.5 million naira in benefits. As you said, 10 to 9. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Walker. Have a good night and stay safe.